What's up, everybody? Magic with the Racing Dudes back for another Kentucky Derby ish prep race. We're looking at race 10 at Gulfstream Park on January 1st. Happy New Year's Day to everybody. There is 10 is the Mucho Macho Man Stakes, officially not a Kentucky Derby prep race, but this is what really starts the road to the Florida Derby. And the Florida Derby, we know, has produced several outstanding Kentucky Derby performers. So, with this race, it's not a points race, but I think there's at least two horses in here that definitely have a chance to uh, make some noise on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Here we go. They're in the gate for the Mucho Macho Man. Seven broke out. Ever do it uh, broke out quite a bit. A nice break for First World War and for the three Otello. Uh, the one no more time did not get away super clean. Got buried back on the rail. And you see Jose Ortiz taking him way out. You also see Gaff Leon doing the same thing with First World War. Trying to get off some key, uh, away from some kickback. They're going to give Luis Saez on the three Otello all the room up the lane if he wants as the seven ever do it leads and eight C streak is on a tight hold right behind him. Now first world war is three wide. He's got inveigled inside and then the three Otello on the rail. No more time is trailing there. Ignore what the screen is showing you there. That is no more time in orange at the rear trying to stay out of the kickback, but he is not engaged with the race 24 and one. That's very slow. That's good for the, the horses that are on the lead if they're good enough. But right here, you're going to see the four and the six are going to start to move. Saez is going to be in trouble on the three. Actually, Irad loves to get himself in trouble here, too, because he's going to get stuck in between horses and behind. Gaff Leon's going to get some run. No more time is making a good run. And Ever Do It seems to have some more. Nope, he's done. Ever Do It just said no. No more time. And First World War. <laughs> Oh, geez, look at Saez. He's got no room there. He is trying. Come on, First World War. Come on, First World War. Get up there, buddy. Come on, First World War. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Wow. Hats off to C-Streak, and look at Inveigled. First World War. Oh, boy. Otello. Here we go. Otello got it. Otello, First World War, C-Streak. And then Inveigled got fourth there. Inveigled really just flattened out hard. That was... Quite surprising there. Uh, final come home times. That's, well, let's see. From the three-quarter to the seven-eighths, they went 13 seconds. Not that great. And then that final furlong also didn't look that great. It, it looked like they went about 26 or so for the last quarter. I'll have to take a look when they bring it up there. Atella got the job done. He had to grind it away, and that's how he won his maiden. The only other race he's, he's uh, had so far. He really grinded it out and got the job done. This is a son of Curlin. Out of an Escondorea mare, boy, First World War, a great effort. He also got a great trip. Otello had a much worse trip, and I think Otello definitely was the uh, the best horse in that race. So the best horse to me won the Mucho Macho Man Stakes. If you watch off through the turn and off of it, Saez had nowhere to go on Otello. First World War got the run, and those slow early times for C Streak on the lead helped him have the stamina to kick in. Um, the six is a sprinter. The one is a sprinter. Yeah. The eight is a sprinter. The three and the four, that's who I said you want to take out of this race, probably. That's who you want to take out of this race. Uh, <laughs> hey, look. First World War was seven to two. No more time off of that one race. They just got a, a, a heavily bet, and I didn't understand that one. All right, here we go. 26.4. For the final quarter. Not that fast. Not that fast. But I do know we're going to see Otello and First World War stretch out, I'm sure, uh, to a two-turn race. Possibly the Fountain of Youth stakes. Possibly the Holy Bull stakes. Well, I guess we'll wait and find out. I wouldn't target the Holy Bull. Fierceness is targeting the Holy Bull. Neither of those horses is beating Fierceness off of this race. O Otello might get second. Nobody's beating Fierceness off of this race. But that's what I think about it. Uh, congrats to Otello. Congrats to... Uh, Paul Withrow, who owns Otello in the Fantasy League. Mike Samich and I own First World War. We're okay with the results here. This wasn't a points race, so uh, Paul gets five points for Otello winning. We get nothing for second, but we get the knowledge and the confidence our horse will stretch out to go two turns in a future derby prep. Also could go to Tampa Bay Downs. We'll see. Plenty of options there. Tell me what you thought about this race down below in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. What do you think? Otello, great horse, good horse. Both these horses, nah. Let me know down below before you leave. Hit like on the video, subscribe to youtube.com slash racing dudes. Happy New Year to everybody. Come back here for the Smarty Jones analysis and for all of the Kentucky Derby coverage leading up to and through the big day. I've been Magic. Good luck.